Hello there, my name is Heido and welcome to the Pantheon where I've got a new microphone. You can just see it's just here. So hopefully I sound slightly better. Although maybe you now realize how horrible my voice is. What a disaster. Anyway, let's not dwell on that. Let's have a look at a new commander. It's Faldorn, Dreadwolf Herald. Three mana for a 3-3, three, three, Human Druid. Whenever you cast a spell from exile or a land enters the battlefield under your control from exile, create a 2-2 two, two Green Wolf creature token. That's pretty cool, you know. Who doesn't like a nice pack of wolves surrounding them and devouring your flesh? I certainly do. One mana and tap, discard a card, exile the top card of your library. You may play it this turn. So that's going to allow us to get a wolf because we're casting something from exile and it's sort of like card advantage. So really cool to see in a gruel deck. Very, very interesting. I like it. You know, wolves. Whoa. And let's subscribe to this channel, please. Please join me. Join me forever, forever in a day. We're going to be making tons more videos like this, so come along for the journey. Which takes me on to my first selection. And at number five, what have we got? Well, we've got Spark of Creativity. And this card, I've always found like a soft spot for it. I think it's really, really cool. And it's so versatile as well. One red for a sorcery. Choose target creature, exile the top card of your library. You may have Spark of Creativity deal damage to that creature equal to the exile card's converted mana cost. If you don't, you may play the card until end of turn. So there we go, we're casting something from exile potentially. But the fact that this can be used for damage is really, really awesome. And you know, in this sort of deck, I'd maybe have quite a bit of top deck manipulation because if we're going to be exiling top of our library, well, let's make sure we're exiling something good. And this is just one red to potentially remove a threat or get a wolf. Woo! Very, very cool. Which takes me on to an even bigger wolf dinosaur thing. Atali Primal Storm. Six mana, six, six, Elder Dinosaur. Whenever it attacks, exile the top card of each player's library. Then you may cast any number of non line cards exile this way without paying their mana cost. That's a whole lot of wolves we're going to get there. And the best thing about this card is the casting it for free without paying its mana cost. That is just phenomenal. So, so much value, wonderful. And the artwork is really nice. Then we've got Stolen Strategy, which is basically the same as a tally, except we don't get to cast them for free. So it's actually worse in every way. But it's really good. And we don't get things from our own library. Okay, it's, it's terrible, but it's uh, quite cool, really. Five mana for an enchantment at the beginning of your upkeep. Exile the top card of each opponent's library. Until end of turn, you may cast non-line cards from among those exiled cards, and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast spells. So it's drawing us three extra cards a turn, and to be fair to this card, we don't have to get to the attack step like you do with a tally. That's where a tally can fall down. You need to give it haste, or some way of you know cheating it into play, or something like that, and attacking straight away. With this, it just sits there as an enchantment. Doesn't look that threatening, so our opponents probably won't remove it. And it, you know, just generates us value. Then we got Jessica's Will, absolute classic, even though it came out like a year ago. Three mana for a sorcery, choose one. If you control a commander as you cast a spell, you may choose both. Ooh. Now add red for each card in target opponent's hand. Generally our opponents are gonna have quite a few cards. And exile the top three cards of your library. You may play them this turn. There we go. And that's play as well, so lands can be played. When you see it says cast, that means that you can't play lands off it because lands you put into play as a special action for your turn, if you didn't know. So this is a really cool card and just generates so much mana, so much advantage, brilliant. Then there's Flame Skull, which is an interesting one, I think. Three mana for a 3 1 flying Flame Skull cannot block. It's a skeleton. Spooky. And re Rejuvenation. There we go. I can read words. When it dies, exile it. If you do, exile the top card of your library. Until end of next turn, you may play one of those cards. So it's giving you a nice bit of selection. And the best thing is, it's always going to allow you to cast Flame Skull, which maybe you can sacrifice again to cast something else. And each time we're going to get a wolf. 
really really nice bit of value there then we got escape to the wilds which works in so many great ways five mana for a sorcerer exile top five cards of your library you may play cards exiles way until the end of your next turn so you may play an additional land this turn as well and the cool thing is we're not just going to get it this turn it's also next turn it's because the end of your next turn next turn if you get what i mean so we don't just have the turn you cast it you have the next turn as well next turn and so it's a really really good thing and being able to play those lands is phenomenal because we can just you know get a bit clogged with lands in exile and you know we could exile four lands well getting an extra land drop is really important here and then to finish off we got chandra torch of defiance who does it all four mana for a four level to planeswalker plus one exile the top card of your library you may cast it this card you may cast this card remember cast you cannot play a land if you exile it if you don't it deals two damage to each opponent so a nice bit of uh, an effect there Plus one, add double red to your mana pool. So nice acceleration to get up into a tally or something. Then minus three, deal four damage to tag creature. Removal. And an emblem that will win you the game whenever you cast a spell. Deal five. Although you will have to be playing for quite a while in Commander for that to matter. You know, there's a lot of life knocking around. But there you go, a nice selection of cast from exile and play from exile cards. Which brings me on to number four. And at number four, we've got Rousing Refrain and the Suspend mechanic. And these are a selection of Suspend cards that you keep casting. Because when you cast a Suspend card, when it comes off Suspend, you're casting it from exile. So we'll get a wolf. And with these, like Rousing Refrain, which is a five mana sorcery, Add red for each card in target opponent's hand. Hey, it's just like Jessica's will, except it's it's not as good. But you can, until end of turn, you don't lose the mana as steps and phases end. So quite cool if we're using it in combat or something like that. Exile Rousing Refrain with three time counts on it, so it gains suspend again. So every three turns, we're going to get a free wolf and tons of mana that we can use for whatever we want. Now that's just pure value if you ask me. Then, very similar, we've got Arcblade, which is worse. There's a lot of things that are worse. I mean, I'm being very negative here. It's a great card that's situational. There you go. Bit of positivity. Five mana, it deals two damage to any target. Ooh. Exile it with three time cancels on it. So every time you're casting this and it resolves, it's going to put itself back into exile. So you're going to cast it again. So spend three for three mana. So it's nice to get these set up. And what I'd like to do is set them all up because we got four of these, so that each one of these is coming off on a different turn. So every single turn, we're going to get a free cast from exile, a free wolf, and just continually generate value. Value. Then the Venture Fourth, which is a brand new card from this set. Four mana for a sorcery. Exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a land card. Put the card onto the battlefield and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Exile it with three time counters on it. Are you sensing a theme here? This is really good, but you do have to be aware that you don't get to choose the land. It's just whatever land you come to. So it could be great, it could be like a command tower, or it could be a basic swamp. No, in this deck it wouldn't be a basic swamp, but you get what I mean. It could be something that you don't particularly want. Finally, we've got a Pocrosite. Two mana for a 1-1. One, one. If it enters the battlefield, it comes in with three 1-1 one, one counters on it. If you didn't cast it from your hand, that's really cool. And when it dies, exile it with three time counts on it and it gains suspend. So this is weaker than all of the spells we just talked about because you need a way to like keep sacrificing it. it shouldn't be too hard in red, but it can just keep coming back. We can keep casting from exile. And this gains haste when it comes in from exile because that's part of suspend. Very bizarre rules. And there you go, nice repeated value there that we can do over and over again. And that takes me on to number three. That number three has fallen to pieces, hasn't it? But at number three, we got Immer Wolf. So we're going to be making a lot of wolves and I like to like put little tribal synergies in there. It's not the main bit of the deck, but it's a nice little sort of cushion that we can sit on. Rest our, you know, sculpted buttocks on. And Immerwolf is a great place to rest. Three mana for a 2-2 with Intimidate, so it can't be blocked except for Azvrak creatures 
and all creatures share a color with it. Other wolf and werewolf creatures you control get plus one plus one. Non-human werewolves you control can't transform. Now, I focus more on the wolf side of things here, but you could easily make this into a werewolf deck and a lot of wolf and werewolf things sort of cross over and this is one of them. Then we've got Ren's Run Packmaster. Four mana for a 5-5 five, five with champion and elf. So in this deck, I play quite a lot of mana dorks and things like that, which generally are elves. So you should have an elf knocking about so that you can champion. Pay three, create a 3-3 three, three green wolf creature token. Very nice. And the best bit, wolves you control have death touch. So all of the wolves that we've churned out, well, now we can just swing in and they're going to kill whatever blocks them. Great bit of value. Then Hallowhenge Overlord, a pretty new card here. Six mana, four, four with Flash, Wolf. A big of your upkeep for each creature you control that's a wolf or werewolf, create a 2-2 two, two green wolf creature token. If we're going wide with wolves, let's go even wider. Why not? Absolutely fantastic and generates a ton of board presence. And it's got Flash, so you can easily flash it in, block a commander. Everyone starts crying. We start laughing maniacally. Then Arlen, voice of the pack, is a planeswalker that you might consider playing because she makes wolves and cares about them. Six mana, minus two, creates a 2-2 two, two green wolf creature token. And seven loyalty, so that's potentially three wolves. Ooh. And each creature you control that's a wolf or werewolf enters the battlefield with an additional 1-1 one, one counter on it. So that's a really nice bit of incidental value and we're modifying all of the wolves that we're going to make then there's master of the wild hunter a classic here four mana for a three three at the beginning of your upkeep create a two two green wolf you can tap this and tap all untapped wolf creatures you control each wolf tap this way deals damage equals its power to target creature that creature deals damage equals its power dividers as its controller chooses among any number of those wolves very wordy but basically they fight the wolves fight something there you go job done really really great card and it's just incidentally making us wolves over and over again and then we can use them to sort of remove a commander something like that and that takes me on to tovalar dire overlord so a werewolf here three mana three three whenever a wolf hey or werewolf boo you control deals combat damage to play draw a card that's pretty good, isn't it? And at the beginning of your upkeep, if you control three or more wolves or werewolves, it becomes night. Then transform any number of human werewolves you control. Fantastic synergies there. This is for if you really want to go into the werewolf side, but the drawing a card whenever one of our wolves deals damage is more than enough to make this playable. Then we've got Tovalar, the Midnight Scourge, on the other side of him. So this is what he transforms into. Whenever a wolf or werewolf you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. Oh my god. And you can pay a red, a green, an X. Target wolf or werewolf you control gets plus X or so against trample until end of turn. Very, very nice. Nice bit of value. One of our wolves could potentially get in there and kill one of our opponents. Although it is pretty telegraphed, you know. They're, they're going to know it's coming. But the trample is really nice anyway. So a nice wolf package there. Woo! Hey, this one actually looks like a two. And then at number two, what do we have? We've got madness so our commander we can tap her and discard a card Ooh, well if we're discarding a card let's use madness and the cool thing about madness is if you discard this card discard it into exile then you cast it for its madness cost from exile so all these madness cards will generate us a wolf which is just fantastic value and stormskirk occultist is one of the best ones three mana three two with trample when it deals combat damage to a player Exile the top card of your library. <laughs> Until end of turn, you may play that card. So not only is it working with the Bandus sort of style of things, it's working fantastically by exiling the top card of our library. So we can get another wolf there. Wonderful, wonderful. It just works perfectly in the deck. And that takes me on to Blazing Rottweiler. So sometimes when you're discarding cards, you don't have much mana, you know, or you want to concentrate on doing other things. But this allows us to generate a lot of board presence. One red for a 1-1 one, one lizard. Pay a red, it gets plus 2% so until end of turn. Activate only once each turn. But the madness cost is zero. So if we discard this to like our commander's ability, we can cast this for zero mana and get ourselves a wolf and a 1-1. One, one. Ho ho! Incredible. Very similarly, because 
you know, that other card was based on this, is Basking Root Waller. One green for a 1-1, one, one, pay two. <gasps> it gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. Activate only once each turn. And the madness cost is zero. So these are just fantastic to have in the deck and you can just generate a nice bit of value, you know. And they're cheap foil, so always a positive, isn't it? Then this is a nice sort of removal spell that I think doesn't see enough play, really. Avacyn's Judgment, two mana. And madness cost for a red and an X, so you can pay X if you discard it. It deals two damage dividers as you choose among any number of targets. If the spell's madness cost was paid, it deals X damage dividers as you choose among any number of permanents or players instead. Whew, I fell to pieces. But this can just absolutely wipe someone out of the game. We're playing green, we're going to have a ton of mana. A lot of the rousing refrains and things like that generated a lot of mana. We can easily burn someone out of the deck with Avacyn's Judgment. Very nice card. So, nice little mana selection for you there. I'm not mad, I swear. <laughs> oh, God. Anyway, let's have a look at my number one pick. And at number one, we've got Food Chain. Of course we have. It's incredible. It's just fantastic, especially with all the tokens we're going to be making. So, Food Chain is a three mana enchantment. Remove a creature you control from the game. Add X mana of any color to your mana pool where X is a removed creature's converted mana cost plus one. That mana may be spent only to cast creature spells. So, a lot of the things we've been talking about are creature spells and all of these wolves we're going to be making, well, we can sacrifice them to get one mana because tokens have a mana value of zero. Add one to that. Well done, you've got the maths prize, you've got one mana. But we can go even further than that because Food Chain, you know, I don't know if you know, it's incredibly degenerate. So say we've got a Squee the Immortal, three mana for a 2-1. You can cast him from your graveyard or from exile. Ooh. So this is amazing because we can dis discard him to our commander then cast him from the graveyard or if he goes to exile where i say i don't know we sacrifice into food chain he goes to exile we can cast him we've got four mana from food chain because he costs three cast him and just anyway you get infinite mana which you know pretty goddamn good then similarly we've got eternal scourge which is another great card for casting from exile three mana three three you can cast it from exile there you go, I've just said that word. And uh, if it becomes the target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, exile it so it just sticks there waiting for you to recast it. So both of them work ridiculously well with Food Chain because, well, they generate infinite mana and doesn't get much better than that, does it? Then if we've got infinite mana to cast on creatures, Walking Ballista is ridiculous because it wins the game. <laughs> Double X for a 0-0. Zero, zero. Into Battlefield X-1-1 one, one counters. P4, put a 1-1 counter on it, or remove a 1-1 counter from it. It deals 1 damage to any target. Bing, 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 bing. So you can easily just kill someone outright. And as I've just mentioned earlier, we've got a lot of other cards which make a lot of mana. So this could potentially do a massive threat, even if you don't get the food chain combo. Then Crypt uh, Cryptic Trilobite is a, another version of this, which doesn't kill your opponent. But I really like this because our command has an activated ability. So this generates mana, uh, mana for activated abilities. Double X, it enters with X, one one counters. Can pay one and tap it to put a one one counter on it. And you can remove a one one counter to make double colorless. Spends mana only to activate abilities. So our commander's tap ability does cost a mana. So we can store up counters on this, keep building them up, and then just use the mana whenever we want. And if I was going to play this, I'd play a lot of other cards that sort of have activated abilities to make use of this. Really cool card. Then if we're casting a lot of things from exile, Nalfashini? <laughs> I don't know. Look at the jugs on that. Anyway, six mana for a four, six fire. Whenever you cast a spell from exile, copy it. <gasps> if you can choose, you can choose new targets for the copy. If it's a permanent spell, the copy gains haste and at the beginning of your end step, sacrifice this permanent. So much value, absolutely phenomenal. Really, really good. Six mana is a big investment, but you know, a beast demon four, six is pretty good. It's gonna hold its own and it's gonna generate so much value. Speaking of value, we've got Wild Magic Sorcerer. Four mana for a 4-3 Orc Shaman. The first spell you cast from exile each turn has Cascade. So to Cascade, you just 
uh, keep going through your deck, revealing cards until you reveal something that costs less than the card that caused the cascade. And then you cast it for free. Oh, absolutely phenomenal. Is that casting it from exile? I think it is. Oh my God, so many wolves. So that is a wonderful card. And all of these cards just work brilliantly with the exile sort of idea that we're going for here. And I'd like it if you'd please subscribe. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video and you know, I've given you some help. So come and join me on my journey through Magic the Gathering. And tell me if this microphone's better. I, th I think it is. I can't hear myself. Can you hear me? Be a bit embarrassing if I if you couldn't. Anyway, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye. Oh no. Oh god, bye.